there boys and girls welcome back to the stick and brush I'm Christine and it's been a little while since I filmed um, just kind of a hectic week and when it wasn't hectic I just wasn't feeling it. <laughs> um, but anyway I do want to say I am filming on a new uh, phone camera <laughs> um, so I hope I mean it's the same brand and everything like that but um you know it's the first time so of course everything might be just a little different um, so I just wanted to get that out of the way all right so what have I got for you today well today I wanted to talk a little bit about something that may be a little I don't want to say controversial but people definitely have strong opinions about it um, or can have strong opinions about it so I want to say first of all you know not that I've ever had any problems with people arguing or anything like that in the comments but please just you know if you do have very strong feelings and they are different from another commenters very strong feelings please try to keep it nice and light <laughs> because it's makeup it's not a serious issue <laughs> um, but yeah today I wanted to talk about dupes and I kind of wanted to, you know, put it out there and talk about like, you know, are we duping ourselves into liking dupes? Are they worth it? Um, are they immoral? Um, and I'm not really necessarily, I mean, I have my opinions too, which I'll present, but I kind of also want to see what other people's opinions on them are. Now first, when I say dupe, I do not mean like the forgery type. Um, when a company makes it look exactly like the original, when the packaging is the same, it has the name on it, the brand, that kind of thing. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is when you take the, you know, the color story, or the color or um, you know the type of formulation it's not necessarily the same formulation because you know it's a different company doing it and they rarely get the exact same formulation um, but you know what do you think about that um, because I mean legally it's allowed legally because you cannot trademark necessarily well, I guess you can trademark a color but it's been you know color new colors are discovered so rarely now um, or formulated now I guess it's more what it is that you know you can't you can't claim that color is yours and only yours to use um, so uh, from the way I've been kind of looking at things there are three types of dupes that I would say that I, or I would put them in three different categories there are probably many more or you know you might just consider dupe a dupe um, but I have tons of stuff on my vanity in front of me here um, and I wanted to kind of talk about it um, the first kind of dupe is what I tend to buy the most and these are the very intentional dupes um, there are usually very specific companies that specialize in duping um, what they do is they take you know they they try to get the colors as spot-on as they can from a popular palette um, usually I'm, I'm gonna say palette because palettes are the most frequented there are other ones but just for now we're gonna say palettes um, sometimes they put them in the same kind of um, order sometimes they you know their order is different names are always different um, because names can be trademarked like that um, but they are absolutely intentional even if they don't they probably can't market it that way I'm assuming that there's a legality there but they are absolutely intentionally duping things um, brands like that are their bad habit which is no longer in existence um, alter or I should say it's no longer in existence as a um, their skincare now is from what I understand but I from also what I understand most of the 
creative people went and formed a new company called Alter Ego. So we've got Alter Ego, there's C Color Cosmetics, and um, there are Amazon brands that a lot of those fall under the same umbrella, the same company. Um, there's Changeable, Beauty, what is it, Beauty Bakery? Beauty Glazed. Beauty Bakery is another company that's not a dupe company. Um, there's another one. Um, Changeable, Beauty Glazed, and what's their, You Can Be, that's the main one that they, they're under. Um, there may even be a few other ones that fall under there. Um, in my personal opinion, I prefer Alter Ego and um, C Color Cosmetics because I think that they're better about being um, transparent about their ingredients. Um, and I just think the formulas are better. Um, and yes, I will buy dupes. I can completely understand why some people don't. Um, uh, the first thing I want to talk about here, let me get one that, one that I have both of. There are different reasons that I'll buy them like that. Um, do I have any right here? I don't think I have any that I can compare original to the not original. <laughs> original to the, the, the dupe um, just from those companies. Um, but like these, these are the Bad Habit palettes and these are dupes of Huda, Boot, Huda Beauty. My daughter has me saying Huda Booty all the time. Um, mainly, I first got these um, these actual ones when I first started buying eyeshadow and I definitely was just not going to spend you know the 70 60 70 dollars that it would cost to buy these palettes and this is one bad habit was going out of business so I picked these up for like I don't know like three dollars each um, like I said alter ego I really like alter ego um, this is the Goddess palette, which is the dupe of the Natasha Denona Golden palette. Um, and at this point, I had not tried Natasha Denona. So, you know, this made sense for me. I think this was like $14 um, instead of the, was that 129 I don't know, it was a big, it was one of the more expensive palettes. Like this one, the Artemis, which is the dupe of the Natasha Denona Metropolis. I still have yet to pay $129 for Natasha Denona. There's one coming out that I might. We'll see um, if I can save up enough like gift cards and stuff for it, but that's neither here nor there. Since I have purchased these, well, the Artemis I, I bought after I started buying some Natasha Denona, but I have started buying Natasha Denona. Um, a couple reasons why I would buy the real as opposed to the dupe. The real comes out right away. I'm a very impatient person. Um, plus I have this channel and I like having new products. Um, now for like these things, these were all older products that had already been out. <laughs> so it was just kind of, you know, it was cheaper, especially those ones that I hadn't even tried the formula yet. Um, you know, it's, again, I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm justifying, but I guess I am justifying why I would buy them. I think it's everybody's, you know, you can, you do what you need to do. Not everybody can afford a $129 palette. Not everybody can afford a $65 palette, a $50 palette, or even a 40 something dollar palette. And when you have alternatives, and you know when you're broke you're broke that's all there is to it if it comes between you know if i buy if i buy this palette and i don't have enough gas to get to work but i can buy gas and this palette <laughs> you know hey um so that justifies it to me um some other reasons that i have purchased 
are not wanting to support specific companies or creators. Um, C Color has a whole range of their, these are the unisex ones. Um, they, uh, they have other ones, but this is, was in the unisex um, line. Um, they're duping Jeffree Star. Um, and as of right now, I will not be purchasing from Jeffree Star. If you want to, that's fine. It's your money. You spend your money how you want to. I choose not to um, spend it on him. But if I like the colors or something like that, you know, if there's a dupe, I'll do that. Um, this wasn't why I bought this one, but this Artistry 2, I believe, was a dupe of a KKW. Same thing. I'm not going to give money to the Kardashians. They have enough. Um, <laughs> there's just no need for it. Um, what else do I have here? Okay. Now, I think... I think it kind of brings me into my next category. Well, actually, let me go back to other products. Um, besides eyeshadows, there are other products that are dupes. Um, and I would say intentional dupes. And they're not always done by these kinds of brands. Sometimes they're done by well-known brands. Um, Elf. If you know, if you haven't been following beauty in a while, um, you won't know it, but there's a brand, Tatcha, who came out with their, their silk priming canvas, or I forget exactly what it's called, but it's like 50 some dollars. And everybody raved over how wonderful it was, but $50? <laughs> Elf came out with this and I haven't tried the Tatcha to tell you how it compares, but there are people that are saying it's very, very close. It's $8, $50, $8. I mean, if you have the money to blow and you want to blow it, but not all of us can do that. <laughs> Especially, you know, a lot of things now that I'm really into makeup, I know they're coming out in advance and I can plan and budget for them but you know if you're going out and you know you need a primer and you want something like this when you see okay I can buy the Tatcha for $50 or I can buy this one for $8 this is the way I'm going <laughs> and the quality I will say the quality sometimes I mean sometimes they're on par Sometimes they're not quite as good. Sometimes they're better than the original. You, you kind of have to, you know, learn, <laughs> uh, you know, and play with stuff. But when you're trying something, especially if you don't know that you're going to like it, um, and I would say this goes more for things other than eyeshadow palettes, because eyeshadow palettes, if, especially if you've got a lot, you're not going to run out of it. Um, but things that you might run out of it a lot, if you're not sure you're going to like something, buying a dupe first, and if you decide, hey, I actually do like this, then you can spend more. That's a great way, too. Um, there are dupes, let's see. Um, then there are things that I would call unintentional dupes. And I don't know that they're necessarily unintentional, <laughs> but um, a couple of examples. Usually these are things that you just kind of find, like they weren't marketed in a certain way. Like when you see these things, you know, you look at them, and you're like, that's exactly what that palette is. But then other times you look at things, and you're like, that kind of looks like it. I really wasn't on my radar, but they're usually kind of, you know, unintentional finds. I had one of these this year with, this is the Natasha Denona uh, bronze palette. And like I said, I, you know, I've been buying these now because I want them when they first come out. This was $65. A couple weeks later, I bought this palette from Wet n Wild, which was, I want to say 16, if even that much. Sorry, it smells like coffee, so I gotta smell it. And I was opening this up for the first time. I was like, wow, that kind of looks a lot like it. 
it's not a dead on dupe where it's like, you know, oh, this is a, the exact same, you know, they're trying to get the exact same colors and they have the exact same number of shades and everything. It's not like that. Um, so maybe if you have a moral problem with buying like the exact dupes, you may want to look for these kinds of dupes, these unintentional dupes. I don't necessarily think Wet n Wild was trying to dupe this specific palette. I think they were more along the lines of, you know, we want this this color story and a lot of these color stories, like these nudes and stuff like that, there are only so many colors. <laughs> Um, another one of those and I don't know I mean this was a little too close to say how unintentional it was but the dupe actually the dupe came out before the high-end one um, what I'm talking about here is the Natasha Denona Riviera and it's got these pretty colors here and then we have Makeup Revolution or Revolution or whatever they're going by these days, which they are known for duping lots of things. Um, and they'll do it, you know, more in a, you know, it has a few extra shades kind of thing, but it almost always has all of the shades. But this didn't seem to be that case because this one came out before. I'm not sure how that happened. If somebody saw production pictures and just decided to get in there early or what, but this is the, I guess I should tell you what this name of this palette, this is the Forever Flawless Constellation palette. And it has the shades in there. This one was like 15. This one was like 46 or 48. Um, we've got things like um, the this is Charlotte Tilbury. Ooh, I have pink on me. I better not get that on my face. That would look ridiculous. Um, the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away um, that comes with the little poof up here and you twist it. This is their concealer. Um, and some people, I don't think this is quite as close as other people claim, but they have the, um, uh, sorry, Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. Uh, concealer. It used to have a poof. I just pulled it off because I don't like the poof. And these are the same types of products where they're, you know, I don't know how unintentionally, you know, they were doing it, but, you know, they're not duping like the exact package. Now, Makeup Revolution just released one that has packaging almost identical to it. So it's a definite dupe. <laughs> um, uh, and then we get into the part where it becomes questionable for me. Are dupes worth it? <laughs> um, and this is um, uh, this is the Flower Beauty, the blush balm. Um, this uh, people have compared this, and also actually, there's a new ColourPop one that comes out tomorrow or tomorrow from when I'm filming this that people have talked about that it's going to be like a really great dupe for the Glossier. What is it? Their cloud paint or something like that. I'm not sure, but you're looking at the prices you're looking at there. Like the Glossier is like 18 or something. And I think this was 10. I mean, this is where I start talking and you know, telling myself, is that really worth it? I mean, again, these are not the kind of dupes where they're obviously like all the colors are the same, that kind of thing, but they're going for the same kind of benefit and uh, formula. Are we fooling ourselves into thinking it's a dupe, so it's cheaper, so I should buy it? And in some ways, I, you know, I want to say, well, $10 is $10, but also $10 is only $10. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a hard line to to watch especially you know sometimes the cheaper stuff you get better the, the better quality sometimes you don't and this is kind of where I wanted your opinion you know when does a dupe become a dope <laughs> or when do you when are you a dope for buying a dupe instead of the real one um now the final category I have for dupes 
I think are the ones that are the most morally okay, if we're going to put that way. I don't, again, I don't think that any of them are immoral, but if you're going to put it in those categories, <coughs> which I think are the most okayest <laughs> to break English completely. When you have products that are made by the same company or in the same factory, um, and I don't know if this is how it always has been, but I know years ago, like when you go to the grocery store, you can buy Betty Crocker, Duncan Hines, or whatever it is, or you can buy Kroger's brand or Publix brand or whatever like that. Now, it used to be that, you know, Kroger had a deal with whatever, like say Duncan Hines, and whatever brownie mix they had left over, they would sell cheap to Kroger, and Kroger then would, would box it up with theirs so they could sell it cheaper. Um, but Publix would have a deal with, what did I say before? They would have a deal with the other one. So if you like the Betty Crocker, you li might like the Kroger. But if you like the uh, Duncan Hines, you might like the Publix. Um, and so I'm not sure if that's what this is, but you know, if you want to compare it to that. But things like, and I don't know if these things are still true because I you know when they first came out, they were rumored to be. Um, like the Fenty Beauty, this is actually actually empty but I just keep it around I don't know why um, but the Fenty Beauty was or maybe still is was made by the same in the same factory as the Catrice cosmetics um, the HD liquid and so everybody was talking about how these are dupes well yeah they're probably the same thing again I don't know if that's still true I bought these a while ago um, people loved CYO life long lasting life proof foundation. Well, CYO went out of business and people were scrambling to find a dupe because they loved this foundation. Um, but Soap and Glory actually owned CYO. And so they have their kick ass all day long wear foundation, which is basically the same thing, you know, made by the same company. Um, Again, I don't know if this is true, but I'll, you know, so I'll put that disclaimer on there. But I've heard the same thing about Beauty Pie. Um, Beauty Pie is like a, I don't want to say subscription service, but you pay monthly to get the discounted price, and it's a big discount. Um, and you can buy their own branded cosmetics. But from what I've heard, it's, they are actually, or at least most of them are or were high-end brands that they would buy in bulk and cut out all the middleman stuff and they would sell it. So at one point I heard like their foundation was Giorgio Armani, one of theirs. So if you liked that, you would love the beauty pie stuff because it was the same. Um, so when it comes to that, you know, businesses all have hands in it. So I find, I feel that that's completely okay. Um, and I can understand, you know, these, you know, these creators, um, especially, you know, the, some of the smaller companies, if they're getting duped, I can understand frustration of, you know, bigger, or I can understand frustration of those smaller companies um, when, you know, they might be losing money to companies that are duping them. Um, I also, though, have very little sympathy for big businesses. <laughs> so when you're talking about like a very big conglomerate, I have very little sympathy for them losing too much money, <laughs> especially since dupes don't come out right away. Um, some of the cheaper ones will, like I said, you know, I'm not a big fan of the you can be changeable, whatever. They come out very quickly. I shouldn't even say very quickly. I would say a, it takes them a couple months. So you've still got all of the brand new sales out of the way. Um, things like C-Color and um, 
alter ego, they usually take, you know, nine months to a year before they put something out. So, you know, again, it's a lot of time that they've had to make their money. <laughs> so I, I can't feel too bad about big business losing money. But now that I have rambled on forever and ever and ever, I want to know, what do you think? Are you a duper? Um, do you think us dupers are dopes? Or are you somewhere in between? So let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear your opinions, but please be nice to everybody, even if you have strong opinions in the opposite direction, because I just want this to be a friendly conversation. And you know, if you have strong feelings, you can go ahead and post why you may change somebody's mind. But just know like you're an idiot for doing it, you know, just say, well, you know, this is why I don't or this is why I do. So um, yeah, so thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and do all that bell ringing stuff on your way out and follow me over on Instagram at steak underscore and underscore brush. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.